Hello, everyone, and I hope you're all doing great today. Now, today we're going to explore some formulas that are very useful in answering half-life related questions. However, before you can use these formulas effectively and even know when to use them, it is very important for you to understand and know the meaning of the variables used in the formulas. And so looking through the formulas, you will notice you see T a half, and T a half is half-life. And half-life is a time taken for, for half of a sample to decay, or the time taken for a nucleus to divide or disintegrate into a half. You will notice you also see LN, and LN represents normal log, and you will see this on your scientific calculators. Again, you will notice you see normal log 2, and normal log 2 equals to 0 0.639, which is a very important number for you to remember. And you'll find it's cool just to use it instead of using the long equation, just probably saying where, wherever you see normal log 2 and make life easier. You'll also notice you see NO, and NO represents the original sample. And what the original sample is, is the original amount, the original particles, the original mass. So it may be presented in any of those formats. Again, it is relating to the amount that you're starting out with before decay even start taking place. Or the amount you start out with at a certain point. Right? But it's always the starting amount. All right, and relative to that, you also see NT. And NT now is remaining sample, which means the final amount, right? Or what is left after decay within a certain period of time. All right, so it's very important for you to know the difference between the original amount and the final amount. What you notice as well, looking through the formulas, you will see T, and T is time elapsed, which means the amount of time passed or the amount of time taken for the sample to decay. Notice you see K, and K represents constant rate. And constant rate, again, as you see the word rate, it refers to time. So it is always relative to time. And so the formula, when you use it to calculate this, what you'll get is per time. And so you may see constant as per second, per minute, per hours, per days, per years. Whatever it is, it is always relative to time. All right. So once you understand this now, I just want to quickly point out another useful formula here, which is how to calculate the number of half-lives. The number of half-lives is very important because it is used in a lot of questions. And so it's very important for you to know it. And so the number of half-lives is given as time pass, which is T, divided by half-life. And so the number of half-lives actually represents the amount of time the substance disintegrates over a period of time. All right? And so the amount of time the nucleus breaks down to two, to two, to two, and so on. All right? So the amount of time. All right, and so this depending on time as well and also the half-life. Now, another useful formula here is the NT that we looked at earlier. NT equals to NO multiplied by half to the power of T divided by half-life. And I really want to show you this application because um, I realize in some cases, you know, students may end up miscalculating values because of how they plug information in their calculators. And so depending on the calculator they're using, to put the power off, especially that part I'm highlighting at this point, you have to plug it in a certain way. And so if you're using the calculator on your left or your right, the keys may be different. And so for the calculator on your left, this special key here is used for the power off. The calculator on your right, this special key is used for the power off. Now, once you know to do that, all right, I want to show you something, which is for clarification purpose. And really, it is really my preference, right? 
I prefer to represent this formula this way. Why? Because I think it's much more clearer. Because it is really telling that is the half to the power of t divided by half-life. Because sometimes using the first represented formula, you may plug everything in, and then you may end up with the incorrect value instead of using this, and you wrote this part out first. Because again, I will indicate to you, please try to write this piece out first. Just find the power of t um, over half-life, so, and then 0 0.5 to that value. And just to make note again, as we look at the original the formula before, t divided by t a half is the number of half-lives, right? So 0 0.5 to whatever the number of half-life is, and just write that out first, then multiply by, by the original number, and you will be good. Now, let's look at an example where we can find now the amount of substance left after decay over a period of time. And again, you get to use this application. Follow through with your calculator and see if you get the same answer here as well. Now, let's say we have a substance with a half-life of 50 years. And let's say we have a original mass of 400 grams. And it took 800 years to decay. And now we want to know the amount of substance or the, or the amount of mass remaining after 800 years. Now, again, this formula is very important for this question. If you notice it, um, you have the half-life theory, you have the original mass or the original amount, you have T, and you have the remaining amount. Now, what I like to calculate first is the number of half-lives, which is T divided by the half-life. And so here, it, is, it will be 800 divided by 50. And so what we get there is 16 half-lives. In other words, the 400 grams have been dividing by a half 16 times within the period of 800 years. Now, we're going to plug this into a formula. And so what we'll get now is, by substitution, is 400 grams, which is our original mass here, multiplied by 0 0.5 to the power of 16. Again. You plug this in the calculator using your special key. And so you press 0 0.5. Then you press this special key, 16. All right. And what you should get here is 0 0.00001529. All right. And so, the, and so 0 0.5 to the power of 16 equals this value. And then multiply by 400 grams. And then, as a result of that, you should get 0 0.061 grams. And so, after 800 years, the remaining amount of the sample is 0 0.061 grams. All right, so I really hope this was useful for you and very helpful. And so, I thank you for watching. And I also want to tell you that breaking down doesn't mean total loss. So if things are disappearing around you, if things are disintegrating in your life, do not give up. Do not stop because all is not lost. So anyhow, have a safe and blessed day. Talk to you soon.